Chapter 5 My Religion, Its Technique and Dissemination The Divine Life Movement I love seclusion. I have to hide myself at times. I do not crave for name and fame. I did not spend much time in a deep study of all scriptures and religions of the world for preparing thrilling lectures. I never liked to spend time in writing fine essays for publication through books or newspapers. I was not pleased when people called me Mahatma Guru Maharaj. I never planned for any institution to perpetuate my name, but the divine will was different. The whole world came to me with all divine glory and splendor. That may be due to the intense prayers of thousands of sincere seekers after truth, coupled with my own inborn ten tendencies to share with others what I have, <clears throat> and to serve the world on a large scale on the right lines, for the attainment of light, peace, knowledge and power. I was induced to start the Divine Life Society when I found some facility and useful hands to carry on the work. I carried the message of the sages and saints and taught the world the way for peace and bliss. Because of the popularity of the Divine Life Society, many learned and pious souls from far off lands have come to see me and sharing with me the love for selfless, sacrifice, selfless service are doing valuable work in spreading right knowledge which alone can confer lasting peace and happiness. Many foreign branches of the Divine Life Society are reprinting parts of my writings and distributing them free in their respective regions. The Need of the Hour When man gets entangled in selfishness, greed, lust, passion, he naturally forgets all about God. He always thinks of his body, family and ch children. He constantly attends to his food, drink, comforts and conveniences. He is drowned in the ocean of samsara. Materialism and skepticism reign supreme. He gets irritated by little things and begins to fight. There is restlessness, misery, panic and chaos everywhere. Now the whole world seems to be in the grip of materialism. The invention of new kinds of bombs causes terror everywhere. People have lost faith in holy scriptures and the teachings of the sages and saints. People have become irreligious owing to wrong education and evil influences. The stirring events since the advent of the 20th century did not fail to have their effect upon all spiritual minded people. Sannyasis, saints and men of God. The horrors of world wars moved them greatly. The fateful epidemic and the worldwide depression that followed it touched their compassionate heart. They saw that the sufferings of mankind were mostly brought on by its own deeds. To awaken man to his errors and follies and to make him mend his ways so that he may enthusiastically utilize his life for attaining worthier ends was felt to be the urgent need of the age. Millions were eagerly looking for such guidance. This silent prayer was heard and I saw the birth of the Divine Life Mission with its task of rescuing man from the forces of bestiality and brutality and divinizing his life upon this planet. Just at this crucial juncture, I started the Divine Life Society. Now people consider it a blessing to the world. It has as its basis the quintessence of the teachings of all religions and of all saints and prophets of the world. Its principles are broad, universal, all-embracing and in accordance with science and reason. It has set for itself the task of raising man above the sorrows and miseries of this mundane life by making him see the blissful divinity that is hidden behind all outward forms. Good th thoughts pervade and influence all good people. The thought currents generated by the divine life movement have had their effect upon the people of Europe and America and now there is a great thirst for peace all over the world. Millions dread the speedy termination of the race by nuclear weapons. Universal Ideas for <coughs> Spiritual Perfection The Divine Life Society is an all-embracing and all-inclusive institution. Its objects, ideals and aims are very broad and universal. It does not condemn any of the principles or tenets of any cult. It includes all the fundamental principles of all religions and cults. There are no pet dogmas or sectors. 
sectarian tenets it leads people to the spiritual path it enables people to take easily to the divine life even while living in the world and following the teachings of some particular cult or religion the society has brought about a vigorous awakening throughout the world and has contributed much to a new life of freedom in action a life of harmony amidst amidst worldly turmoil and a life of bliss through mental non-attachment and mental renunciation of desires egoism and mindness there is universal appreciation of the principles aims ideals of the society and the method of its work it lays great stress on the practical side of sadhana it expounds in a rational and scientific manner the yoga of synthesis members belonging to various institutions and organizations in all parts of the world become members of the divine life society and write to me for spiritual guidance i take special care of them and give them lessons through post for their spiritual progress and welfare the divine life society proclaims that any man can attain wisdom in his own station of life be he a brahmachari grihastha vanaprastha or sanyasi be he a scavenger brahmin shudra or kshatriya <clears throat> be he a busy man of the world or a silent sadhaka of the himalayas divine knowledge is not the sole property of sanyasins recluses it explains how although the central basis is jnana yoga vedanta it is necessary for one to practice karma yoga for purification of mind and heart hatha yoga to keep up good health and strength and purify the prana and steady the mind raja yoga to destroy the sankalpas and induce concentration in meditation and jnana yoga to remove the veil of ignorance and ultimately rest in one's own satchidanand swarupa the critical juncture students became irreligious they lost faith in religion under the influence of science they, neg- they neglected dharma they began to smoke and gamble girls became fashionable officers became materialists health of people deteriorated people shunned the scriptures materialism had its way at this critical juncture to revive the glory of the lord to disseminate knowledge of yoga to preach the yoga of synthesis to instill devotion and faith in people to work for the spiritual uplift of mankind to bring peace and bliss to every home i established the divine life mission and founded the yoga vedanta forest university in a sacred charming spot in the himalayas on the banks of the holy ganga in rishikesh <coughs> rapid growth of the mission i started the divine life society in 1936 for the spiritual uplift of mankind i trained many sincere students in yoga for their quick spiritual evolution i introduced the morning common prayer classes with group asana class to the local poor people and thousands of pilgrims i gave medical aid by starting a free dispensary experts were sent to various centers to deliver lectures on bhakti yoga and vedanta a small temple was erected for prayers and worship when a large number of students came for training boarding and lodging facilities had to be provided for all the students and visitors and thus sivananda ashram came into being the yoga vedanta forest university came into existence when regular classes began to be conducted on all branches of yoga to help the students all over the world the university press was established for printing necessary works on the practical side and half a dozen periodicals with a number of machines to do the work automatically the small dispensary grew into a big sivananda medical organization with a general hospital and a building of its own though the divine life society continues to be the central organization to fulfill the various functions that have developed to carry out organized work many other institutions had to come into existence now the ashram a very big spiritual colony looks like a huge factory with the wonderful indescribable peace of the himalayas spiritual aspirants who come to the ashram and stay here for months or for years find that there is scope for spiritual progress both as workers in the different institutions of the ashram and as silent meditators in the temple precincts or in the jungle retreats of the neighborhood and each chooses his line according to his own bent of mind basic approach more than to strive to reach a heaven after this life the followers of the divine life try to make conditions of heaven prevail upon earth the tenets of the divine life society are perfectly non sectarian and universally applicable 
the basis of this movement is adherence to the triple ideal of truth non-violence and purity the common fundamental tenets of all the religions throughout the world therefore the divine life movement has the willing cooperation of the people peoples of all faiths and cultures a plan of life and a goal that is common and acceptable to all upon earth who wish to rise above sorrow and obtain lasting bliss this then is the divine life movement no secret doctrines the path of divine life sadhana is no other than the essence of all yogas and the main essential of all religions here everyone finds the features suitable and unoffending to his own faith or belief the great need for a vigorous and intense working of its ideals is more than ever patent today because the most recent developments in the field of fields of science politics and sociology have tended to bring mankind nearer than ever to the brink of the dangerous precipice of total agnosticism and violent self destruction hatred and violence untruth and deceit vice and impurity are fast becoming the order of the day a strong counterforce alone can possibly balance to some extent this downward trend thus to counteract these baneful influences that are rampant today and to check man's whirling rush towards ruin the divine life society was established i carry the message of peace goodwill spiritual fraternity and the realization of the oneness of spirit there are neither petty dogmas nor secret doctrines nor esoteric sections in this divine life movement lovers of truth realize its fullness infinite beauty majesty and splendor it gives room and shelter for all it enables one to realize the religion of the heart the religion of oneness what is true religion not by mere argument or discussion can religion be ta- taught not by precepts or moral canons alone can you convert a person to be religious not by po- pointing to your loads of sacred literature or the miracles of your chief can an aspirant be won over practice religion and live up to its teachings if you want to evolve and attain the goal of life whatever be your religion whosoever your prophet whichever be your language and country whatever be your age or sex you can easily grow if you know the way to crush the ego to destroy the lower nature of the mind and to have mastery over your body senses and mind this is what i have found out to be the way for real peace and bliss eternal therefore i do not try to convince people by heated debates and arguments real real religion is the religion of the heart the heart must be purified first truth love and purity are the basis of real religion conquest of the lower nature of man control of mind cultivation of virtues service of humanity goodwill fellowship and mutual amity constitute the fundamentals of true religion these ideals are included in the mottoes of the divine life society i am very particular in propagating these ideas on a wide scale i do not waste time in finding out suitable authoritative statements from scriptures to satisfy to satisfy the curiosity of as, of aspirants i lead a practical life and try to be an example to the students for molding their lives know that true religion begins when you go above body consciousness the essence of the teachings of all sages and saints the fundamentals of all religions and cults are the same people needlessly fight over non essentials and miss the goal may the divine life movement the harbinger of peace harmony and exalted life shed its luster and glory throughout the world <coughs> gospel of divine life the world of unreality is beset with many difficulties at every step that we take to attain the goal nirvana which the lord buddha attained after years of determined and steady struggle the modern thinker has neither the requisite time nor the patience to perform rigorous tapas and austere religious practices and some of these are even being neglected to the superstitious level in order to give the present generation the benefit that will result from religious practices to reveal to them their real significance and also to convince them thoroughly of their efficacy and usefulness i taught my gospel of divine life which is a system of religious life suited to one and all which could be could be practiced by the common office goer as well as the obscure laborer without 
undue interference in the performance of their daily round of duties. The beauty in divine life is its simplicity and practical applicability to everyday affairs of the ordinary man. While following the teachings of his own religion, a man can attain quick spiritual evolution by following the principles of divine life. Practical Aspect The average seeker after truth is often deceived by the caprices of his mind. A person who takes to the spiritual path is bewildered before he reaches the end of his journey and is naturally tempted to relax his efforts halfway. Many are the pitfalls, but those who plod on steadily by leading a divine life are sure to reach the goal of their religious aspiration, that is self-realization. I have laid great emphasis in all my writings upon disciplining of the disciplining of the turbulent senses, conquest of mind, purification of heart, attainment of inner peace and spiritual strength to suit the different stages of evolution, the taste and temperament of each individual. Role of Divine Life Branches and Spiritual Aspirants My message to individual spiritual aspirants and to the branches of the Divine Life Society is as follows. You have come to this earth to attain spiritual perfection. You have come here to attain supreme and unalloyed bliss. The purpose of human birth is the achievement of divine consciousness. The goal of life is self-realization. Man is not a sensual animal. Man in his essential nature is an ever-free, ever-pure, ever-perfect, immortal spiritual being. Feel that you are the immortal self. You are Satchidanand. Remember, Ajo Nityaha Sasvatoyam Puranaha You are unborn, eternal, imperishable and ancient. To live in this exalted consciousness is to experience indescribable joy every moment of your life. To experience a limitless freedom in the spirit. This is your birthright. This is the aim of your life. This is the goal. To realize this through a life of truth, purity, service and devotion is the chief purpose of the divine life movement. Fear dominates in this era of nuclear weapons of mass destruction. Hatred rules the policies of vast sections of the so-called enlightened and civilized mankind. This age of advancement has been exposed to be in reality an age of degeneracy in the views and values, the ideals and morals of the greater masses of mankind. At this juncture, cultured men and women all over the world look to the sacred land, India, for light and knowledge. It is your noble task to spread this light of spiritual knowledge and spiritual idealism to all corners of the globe. <clears throat> Oneness of Humanity The Upanishads say, All this is verily the Atman. The one blissful self indwells all beings. The spiritual oneness of all humanity is a great lesson man needs today. Whatever has been and whatever will be in the future, all this is verily the one, eternal being alone. The message of divine life is, see God in all faces, serve all, love all, be kind to all, be compassionate, feel everyone to be your own. Serve your fellow beings in the spirit of worship offered to the divine which indwells, in the, indwells them. Service of man is truly the worship of God. Let this message ring freedom from end to end in every land. Let this message enter into every home and into the heart of everyone. All great religions of the world do verily declare this divine message of the spiritual basis of man's life. They do verily declare the universal brotherhood of man under the fatherhood of the Almighty Lord. Know well that the heart of the Vedas, the heart of the Bible, the Holy Quran, the sacred, Gang the sacred Gathas and all the world's scriptures are in truth one and sing in unison the sweet message of love and concord, goodness and kindness, service and worship. Discard the barriers of name and form. Seek the oneness at the heart of all beings. Include within your spiritual embrace entire humanity. Live for peace. Live for universal love. Live in the div life divine. The clarion call of divine life. A divine life branch is a great blessing to man in the present age. It is a veritable boon from the divine. It is a field of dynamic yoga. A field of practical Vedanta. Spread of divine life is the hope of mankind. Through divine life shall man free himself from ignorance, pain and suffering and go beyond sorrow into the realms of peace and bliss now and here in this very life. Divine life brings peace and brotherhood to mankind. It purifies man 
ennobles his nature and unfolds his glorious hidden divine personality divine life is the gift of india to the world at large let the clarion call of the upanishads ring through every village town and city let the glorious chant of divine name fill all quarters let virtue be implanted in every heart and dharma and the good life be seen in every walk of life divine life must be practical ideals of divine life must shoot up into practical realization divine life must be made vigorously manifest in the lives of the people this is important be sincere work with concord be adaptable adjust adapt and accommodate remember always that work is the important thing not personal views and individual opinions therefore dissolve all differences and work together for the cause of a pure life and spiritual perfection perfection of the individual leads to the perfection of mankind ultimately spread the doctrine of selfless service inspire all to follow the path of yoga and attain the goal of life fine health and long life it is not through rules and regulations and restrictions that i tried to help the seekers of the truth stage by stage i gave instructions through letters periodicals and valuable publications to all the students for creating some spiritual vibrations through collective prayers common meditation bhajans and kirtans for spiritual actual progress it is not the number that counts even a sin- single sincere student can move the world and bring light and knowledge to the world the following letters written to my students between 1936 and 1940 will clearly explain how i started a dynamic campaign all over the world and established over 300 branches of the divine life society one importance of collective sadhana evolution is quicker through collective sadhana mass prayers and common meditation the purpose of divine life branches is, is not amassing wealth name or fame it is just to bring peace and harmony to the world by creating spiritual vibrations at various centers organize weekly meetings invite friends who are spiritually inclined clear the doubts of the devotees you can have a library with philosophical philosophical books invite learned men of your place to give discourses occasionally print my 20 important spiritual instructions and other leaflets for free distribution thus you can lay the seed for a divine mission it will grow slowly and bring spiritual good to the world this will contribute a lot to your own evolution and to the uplift of mankind as well how to start a branch of the divine life society well begin is half done i am not interested in gigantic plans and programs if there is a good beginning and if the workers have sincerity faith and devotion success is assured i wrote to sincere students you have made a wonderful start and a good beginning it will strike root and bear blossoms soon you can have the yoga class in a house in a room make a sign board also hold meetings once a week collect some books from your friends and develop a library i shall send you all my publications to meet the ordinary expenses you can collect a small subscription from members have the following aims and objects to help self realization through yoga to regenerate youths roots through yoga asanas pranayam and ethical train, training to disseminate the knowledge of rishis and yogins far and near to develop universal brotherhood cosmic divine love never be disheartened or diffident there are many who have started a branch of the divine life society in their own homes the members of the family join together in the morning and evening for common prayers and conduct bhajans and kirtans the spiritual vibrations thus created bring peace and prosperity to the entire family do something among your own selected friends even with two members i am ever ready ever ready to give detailed instructions to enthusiastic aspirants who are desirous of spreading the divine knowledge collect a few members read some pages of my books clear the doubts of the aspirants make them do some japa kirtan meditation study of the gita gita ask them to maintain a spiritual diary and likhe the japa notebook you have got rare things and knowledge and capacities in which you have not sufficient confidence or of which you are not even aware express your hidden faculties give whatever you possess the world will be benefited form a group in your own place and start similar activities in different parts of the city do not waver be hopeful you can do wonders radiate joy and peace have a definite line of work work a little this will suffice 
you can spend the time nicely usefully let the flower blossom the bees will come by themselves much effort is not needed no effort is necessary simply press the switch it will flow i wish you success freedom and perfection have meditation in the open air with select friends arrange group demonstration of yoga asanas have tratak practice on om or any of the lord's picture for 5 minutes introduce fasting or phalahara or on ekadashi days give lessons on the various chakras prepare the lessons daily at night the previous day concentrate and collect ideas register and record them on a piece of paper or in a notebook read a paper if you cannot deliver a lecture speak slowly recharge yourself with mild kumbhakas and japa take good nutritious food and fruits If you cannot give a fine speech write an essay and read the paper with emphasis and great force from the bottom of your heart slowly you will gain the power of oration when you meet good thirsty souls give them good ideas and ask them to form such groups in their own places that will facilitate your future work ask every man with whom you come in contact to read a few shlokas daily from the gita and repeat the gayatri mantra initiate many eulogize the usefulness of mantra and japa introduce malas for japa spiritual current must be kept alive i carefully watch over the activities of the branches and continue to inspire and encourage them every now and then i send able and advanced aspirants to keep alive the current and spur them onward in their activities here are my instructions to one of them how is the center now dead or gasping or full of life approach all headmasters of high schools and arrange for a magic lantern show of yoga asanas Do not fail to do this work. I did this work in all schools of Punjab and the UP during my travels. Kindly send me a report of your activities now and then. Never make false excuses. Do not be diffident. Do not become a zanana vedantin. Through the work you do in schools and colleges, spiritual samskaras become embedded in thousands of mind. That will burst forth when the time comes. Be bold. even ms judges and surgeons are worldly you will be an avatar before passionate people be bold and talk with nobility humility and sincerity you can electrify and spellbind the audience as you made different strong personality on the platform throw fire zeal and enthusiasm into your utterances do not lose any opportunity whatever you are doing now is sufficient to elevate the world do not wait to become a great pandit to do this work I am receiving several letters from the branches you have visited in and exhibited the movie films in countless appreciations. No one has done such a work before. It is unprecedented. When the work taxes you, hide yourself in your own room or go to a solitary place for a change. Recharge the battery through silent meditation in seclusion and come out with a redoubled energy. Regulate your energy do not pour all in at once take sufficient rest learn to relax hide yourself four service is greater than meditation the present work you do is a greater yoga than the important so called meditation sleep and building air castles combined combined done by vedantins of the present day it is a great yajna work like a lion roar like a lion congratulations on your noble work done in various centers it is all his grace feel this it is his will that worked through your mind intellect and body be grateful to him always pray for his blessings and mercy if anything is offered to you by devotees and admirers do not refuse it under a false sense of vairagya money is needed for for work medicine for the sick and publication work become a mahatyagi and mahabhogi take rest do not overwork regulate your energy drink inhale much ozone do not mix with people take a little talk a little on vital points only as you are working hard take great care of your health take plenty of milk fruits almonds take rest for a week rest means change of work and not sleeping and wasting time with useless friends or in aimless wanderings serve people wholeheartedly willingly untiringly without grumbling without showing even an occasional sunday castor oil face this is rather difficult try your utmost then it will become pure yoga you need not meditate you need not do japa you need not close the nostrils for pranayama 
convert every motion, every breath, every movement of the body into pure yoga as above described. It is service of the Lord. You work, live and breathe for Him alone. Entertain this bhav. You will have cosmic consciousness soon. Remember this point. Work is worship. Work is meditation. Do not forget this. You will have to evolve through work and meditation. Scavenging is yoga when done in the right spirit. The first duty before you is to place your head at the feet of all elders, swamis and everyone in the ashram, be he a scavenger or a zamindar. Feel oneness, be cheerful, adjust, bear injury and insults. Train the mind to be even in all circumstances and places, then only can you be really strong. 5. Integral Yoga I do not encourage lopsided development but urge my disciples, disciples to combine the important branches of yoga with emphasis on dynamic selfless service and cultivation of virtues while yet giving the full scope of individual discretion to the aspirant. I do not press you to remain in cities. Your health and spiritual progress are very important. See how you have turned out solid work in such a short period. If you are still energetic and if you think that you can get on with the work with perfect ease, you can remain there for some time more. Some more time. Or you can say goodbye to the city life. It is in your hands. You can come by the end of this month. Do not stay in cities longer. It will be detrimental to your interests and progress. You need seclusion now. Spend a long period in study also. Your present knowledge is shallow. Your inner nature also is not regenerated. Sadhana is needed. Now you need rest, a quiet life in the Himalayan Gangetic atmosphere for recharging the battery, for doing dynamic work with readable energy and vigor. Long stay in cities must be followed by a frequent change to secluded places. That will be beneficial to you. Kindly do come and stay here for a long period. Mere flying visits will not be of much benefit. Thou art blessed. God exists. God indwells everything. God is the inner ruler. God is to be realized. Dharma leads to God vision. Goodness leads to God. Love leads to God. Meditate on the eternal Thai innermost self or the Atman. Persevere in sadhana. Plunge in sadhana and meditation. Enter the silence. Become a flame of God. Attain eternal bliss through the life divine. He who lives for the service of others is very happy. He is blessed. He attains God realization. Service purifies the heart and brings the divine light. Be rooted in the Atman. This is real sadhana. Claim Thai birthright amidst typewriting, editing books, writing articles. This is better than a cave life. This is dynamic integral yoga. Though you are in the city, feel that you are in the ashram here in the Himalayas. This is yoga. This, the test put by Janaka to Sri Sukha. All round application to the task. I want my disciples to be like myself in applying themselves in all round manner to the propagation of the message to of the Lord and developing the divine qualities in themselves and inculcating them in others. Wherever you go, give, distribute, disseminate your ideas, mo mottos, ideals, broadcast your spiritual feelings, share with others, always give, 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 give all, ask nothing. Your usual routine for meditation and study must be kept up. Brahman alone is real. Minus Indriyas, you are Brahman. Tattvamasi. I am not tired of repeating again and again these three ideas. They must enter your very nerves, cells, blood, bone. Hammer these ideas on the minds of all, along with bhakti and nishkam karma. Carry these three ideas in your pocket, chitta. This world body is shallow, jalam, swapna, jalam. Teach asanas to thousands. Read my Brahmacharya article in all schools and colleges with demonstration of asanas and pranayamas. After silent meditation for 5 or 10 minutes, have Kirtan and Om chanting. Explain the yogic and Vedantic terms to the members. The whole city will be charged with spiritual vibrations. Mere study of my writings with a little explanation of the yogic terms will nicely constitute your yoga class. I have to remind you of initiation into mantra of as many thousands of students as possible. Introduction of Japamala, Kirtan and Bhajan at night. 
study of the Gita, Atmabodh, Vivek Chudamani, the Upanishads, etc. Printing some leaflets for free distribution. On Ekadashi, they arrange for a mass Hari Kirtan in a big hall or temple, have a program for short lectures by great men, distribute prasad at the end. Make necessary preparations seven days in advance. Thrill the world. This is an important and sacred work wherever you go. This is a divine life conference in, in small scale. You can do this, I know. You are doing wonderful work indeed. It is a beautiful beginning. The kind of combination of Japa, Kirtan, Yogasanas, study and lecture is the thing needed. Keep a memorandum book in your pocket. Note down all the points you have to attend to. By such work, you can improve yourself. You will develop thinking. You will know nature, her ways. You will be more concentrated also when the mind is fully occupied. Thousands will be inspired to do some kind of religious performance. It is all purification of heart and yoga for you. You can do real silent solid work through individual talks it is a field of for preparation and, and enlightenment for you work in various localities of the city must be taken up it is not blind work it is not business it is his work done through your body and mind in the course of five years you will excel many of the professors and renowned religious leaders if you are sincere and do study dynamic work